Good morning. Welcome to the worship service of St. Andrew's United Methodist Church, located at 522 Missouri Avenue in Fort Worth, Texas, 76104. Thank you for coming into our doors. And we pray that when the physical doors for in-person fellowship swing open, that you will come and visit and worship with us. But we praise the Lord for this opportunity to come into your home with the good news of Jesus Christ. Please take a moment to like our page and also to press the share button so that others may come in also. Thank you. Now, let's praise the Lord. be called to worship. In our darkest hours, God's light continues to shine. In our weariest moments, God's strength is enough. In our times of great isolation, God is always near. So come, all who are weary, for Christ strengthens us with love and grace. And in this strength, we can do all things. We are here, ready to praise, ready to worship, ready to receive God's blessings. Praise the Lord. Let us all pray. Lord, help me to hear you saying, I am your hope over all the other voices. Lord, your word says you are the hope for hopeless. So I'm running to you with both hands stretched out and grabbing onto you. Fill me up with hope and give me a tangible reminder today that hope is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. God, you know those things in my heart that I barely dare hope for. Today, I give them to you. I trust them to you and ask that you, because I know that you can do more than I could ever guess, imagine or request in our wildest dreams. God, you are my hope and I trust in you. These words we pray. 
Amen. Let us join in our affirming our faith together by reciting this historic creed of the Christian church, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He has descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Church Announcements, August 2nd, 2020. Thank you to all who gave to our birthday fund drive. The winning quarter will be announced and they will be granted bragging rights for the year. We have Sunday school classes each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. by Zoom and conference call. Join us for WOW! Word on Wednesday. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. by Zoom and conference call. If you're interested, please share that in the comment section now or contact us by phone or email that you would like to participate. We are preparing our fall studies and programming, so please check our website often for new information as it becomes available. It is First Sunday, Communion Sunday. Please gather your communion elements before you so that you are ready when Pastor Gibson opens communion after the message. This concludes your church announcements. It's offering time. You are invited to give to the work of Christ through St. Andrew's United Methodist Church as an act of worship. The mission of St. Andrews is to impact lives and make disciples by sharing the Christian faith as we interact in the community. This is what God has grown us to do, for there is great and godly work to be done in our community, in our city, and in our world. We are working to be about that business. Our vision is to grow people who grow people. That is who God is growing us to be. Praise the Lord. We have to give God room to move. And that's what we do when we give our best gifts to God through our tithes and offerings. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 22 instructs the farmers not to harvest their whole field. Now to us, that doesn't make good business sense because it's like leaving money on the ground. They planted seed right to the edges, but then were instructed not to harvest to the edges. May God have been teaching them to always leave space for God, to honor God, and to share resources with God. Remember, it all belongs to God to begin with. We don't need to hold so tightly to every dollar we make. We need not squander our money either, but want an investment when we give a portion to God and seed into the kingdom for God's work. This is where the real blessing is, as we give room for God to move in our lives and in the lives of others. May we be blessed to be a blessing. You may give by the Givelify app from your phone from the Give the Five button on our website at standrewsftw.org or you may mail your giving to St. Andrews UMC 522 Missouri Avenue, Fort Worth, Texas 76104. You need not be a member to give. 
just one who wants to see God's work done in you and in others. Thank you. Thank you.
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Welcome to worship. I'm so glad to be able to worship with you this morning as God comes into our midst and as we give God glory and honor. Our text this morning comes from Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 12 through 15. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 12 through 15. Hear ye this word. It says, so strengthen your drooping hands and weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, so that if any part is lame, it will be healed rather than injured more seriously. Pursue the God of peace along with everyone and holiness as well, because no one will see the Lord without it. And that 15th verse says, see to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. For the month of August, we're going to be using a sermon series entitled Higher Ground, Higher Ground. And for this morning's message, as part of that series, we want to talk about cleaning out the closet. Amen cleaning out the closet. Let's pray. God of grace and mercy, we give you praise for this right now moment. We ask, oh God, that we would lay aside the weights that so easily beset us, that we might be at one with you, that we might hear your word, and that, oh God, we might do your word. Now may the words of my mouth and the attitudes of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Clean out the closet. If we're going to go to higher ground, uh, we've got to clean out the closet. Amen. Uh, we have lamented about this uh, COVID-19 time, the time of quarantining, uh, all of the things that have happened uh, during this time, uh, our sheltering in. Uh, we have done enough lamenting and complaining. And I want you to know that We've got to change our attitude because God is doing something awesome in this day. And do you not perceive it? If we can't turn from the pessimism uh, that we have uh, and turn toward the optimism of seeing what God is doing, we will never perceive it. God is doing something during this time. And I don't want to miss it, and I don't want you to miss it either. So we've got to clean out the closet. We've got to adjust our attitude because bitterness is what that 15th verse was talking about. Uh, bitterness can grow. We all have a tendency uh, to want to fall into bitterness uh, because of life situations, circumstances, whatever it might be. Uh, but bitterness can be like a cancer, yeah, uh, that messes up your whole mind and heart. And it can even turn you from Christ. It, it can even mess with your relationship uh, with God. And we don't want that to happen. Amen. And so we have to understand that instead of uh, uh, moving toward bitterness, we can move toward betterness betterness. We can grow better during this time and through this time if we sense that God wants us to grow. This 12th chapter, uh, the author is encouraging us to embrace any hardships we endure and allow God to shape us to our advantage. God is still wanting to do something in the midst of our lives, even though we're going through this for some that might call it uh, the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, but God is still doing something awesome even during this time. And so we don't want to miss it. We want to be in the midst of it. We don't want it to overlook us, overcome us. We want to go with the flow that God has for us, and we want to grow during this time. We have lamented so much from all of this that we can't see the opportunities that can come from this. And it has to start with our relationship with God. God wants to grow us in every area of our lives but he wants to start it with our relationship with him and changing our attitude so that we can see what God sees and what we can see what God is doing. So we have to change our attitude in order to seek higher ground. And the way we're going to start that this morning is that we're going to clean out the closet. Amen. We're going to clean out the closet. You may see this as the midnight hour, but I want you to know something good can happen at midnight. Amen. So when we look at this growing into betterness, be becoming better through this, uh, we have to check our attitude. Uh, if we want to, to be, begin to be better, 
if we want to grow in betterness, uh, we have to replace our, our complaining, amen, with positive, with positivity. Instead of talking about all the bad that's happening, lift up some of the good that might be happening right now in your household, on your workplace, in your life, how you're seeing Christ, how you're seeing things work and change in the world today. We don't want to uh, uh, get stuck with that attitude of bitterness. No, we want to take on the optimism and the hope that only Christ can give us uh, by moving into betterness. And that's what the author is trying to help us in this passage in Hebrews to understand that we can, we can move into betterness. We, we can seek higher ground for our lives. We can clean out the closet, amen, uh, so that we have the space, amen, uh, for something good to be deposited and for something different to happen. Let's look at a few things that we can do. Sometimes we have to look at some of those complaining friends that we have. They, they feel our attitudes with their attitudes. We have to connect with positive people. Uh, we tend to become like the people we associate with. Amen. Solomon once wrote, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Watch who you're around and the attitudes of others that may surround you. To, can they see the hope that Christ has for this day? Can you talk about about what Christ might be doing uh, with your friends, uh, with your loved ones? Can you talk about uh, seeing the hand of God move in all of this? If you want to move toward betterness in all of this, you got to replace your attitude uh, with one of thanks, thanksgiving and thankfulness to God. Paul once said, do everything without complaining or arguing. I know that's hard. Amen. But we have to do it so that we may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation. We want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Amen. In which you shine like stars in the universe. Philippians, the second chapter, the 13th verse. Uh, so if we're going to be better, if we're going to clean out the closet, then we've got to replace our attitude of complaining uh, with one of thankfulness to God. God, I thank you for the food on my table. God, I thank you for another day's journey. God, I just thank you that in the midst of all of this, that you are walking with me, that I am not alone. We have to replace it with thanksgiving and thankfulness to God. If we're going to grow better, we have to engage in the ministry that God offers to us. Paul says, hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. When we take out the time and use our talents and uh, reach out to others, when we serve and speak of what Jesus means to us and offer scriptures and comforting passages of hope to others, the Lord fills our heart with joy and someone is impacted. What we do is not in vain. We're not spinning our wheels. Gossip will get you nowhere, but sharing Christ will get you everywhere. Amen. That bread that's cast out on the order will not come back void. If we're going to move toward betterness during this time, if we're going to clean out the closet, we've got to replace any bad attitudes with a heart of kindness. Amen. We have to be more compassionate. We have to work on ourselves during this time if we're seeking to go to higher ground. We've got to clean out the closet. We've got to forgive everyone. Amen. As Christ forgave us. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 says, put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as Christ, God in Christ has forgiven you. Oh, we say that's so hard, but I'm going to tell you, it lightens the load for us. Amen. It lightens the load for us as we move toward betterness, as we move toward higher ground. It lightens the load to be able to let some things go. Praise be unto God. We have the power to choose to be kind, caring, and forgiving since Jesus set the supreme example of what that looks like for us. Not only did he set the example of what it looks like, but he modeled that and he showed that to us. He was kind and compassionate to you and to I, to myself. If we want to grow in betterness, if we want to uh, uh, clean out the closet, 
We got to watch our negative conversations. Yeah, there's some things that are going to mess you up. There's some things that you're going to be upset about. But watch how you frame them. I used to not ever let my kids say hate because it just drove, it, for me, it just drove something uh, in them to say, I hate this and I hate that. And there was no coming back from it. Amen. And so we have to watch our negative conversation. The scripture tells us to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Do not let any unwholesome talk come from your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. You were taught to put away your former way. Amen. And to accept the new creation that Christ has given to us. And yeah, the old man wants to rise up, but we have to be mindful of our conversations. We're going to clean out the closet. We've got to let to go of some of that old language and the old stuff that we've said and that we've held to. When we learn to speak in an edifying way that builds people up, it fills our hearts with gladness and it builds others up in such a way that they see their own self-worth. And then they, in turn, seek to build others up. If we want to move toward betterness, if we want to clean out our closet, we have to be mindful uh, that we can't be engaged in so much negativity, whether it's in television, whether it's in, 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 in any of those things. God wants us to clean out. What are you doing with your time right now? God is going to hold you accountable to the time that he has given you. We often think about uh, heaven as being a place where God is going to record our sins and tell us what I said. God already knows that. God wants to ask you and help you to be accountable to share what have you done with the time that I've given you? What have you given with, done with the life that I've given you? What have you done with this love that I've poured out on you? How have you shared the grace that I've given you? How, what are you doing with your time right now? As we go through this time, what are you doing with your time? The world can be filled with bad news, but are you grasping any good news? Are you sharing any good news? Fix your thoughts on what is good and what is right and what is pure and what is lovely. And even in the ugliness of the world, what can you do to bring hope and help to the situation? Our faith in God calls us to want to go higher in life. Our faith in God calls us to want to clean out the closet so that we can move into betterment and not into bitterness. If you want to move into betterment, you got to commit yourself to fulfilling God's priorities. You've got to be part of worship. You've got to be part of, 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 of discipleship. You, you've got to be uh, growing in Christ, growing in God's word. Uh, it's so easy to say, well, I'm bored. How often have you picked up your Bible? How often have you got on the prayer call uh, to, uh, to be in prayer for others? Uh, God is giving us many opportunities for a new way and a new day in him. But we've got to see we can't get there by going the old way that we've been going. God is opening new doors for us. The scripture says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. God wants you to be faithful to his word and to grow in him. If you want to grow in betterment, you, you just have to watch your tongue. I, we've already said you have to watch what you say. Uh, the scripture says in James 3 and 10, it says, you know, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. But my brothers, this should not be. My sisters, this should not be. We have to learn the language of God so that we can build others up and that we can encourage ourselves with the word of God. Also, praise be unto God. So we have some work to do to move toward higher ground. We've got to clean out the closet because God has given us this opportunity right now to kind of look at ourselves and our walk with him. How are you walking with God right now? Are you walking in the standard that he has set for us? Are you walking in the way and the will of God? Are, are you committing, amen, yourself to grow closer to him right now? Because I'm going to tell you, praise be unto God through all of these things that we are going through. God walks with us. We do not walk alone. Bless the Lord. So when we talk about moving to higher ground, I want to use this hymn as, 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 uh, a basis for what we'll be doing this month uh, because we ought to want to press. We ought to want to press toward higher ground. Uh, when things go low, Michelle Obama says we ought to go high. Amen. But that's the word that God gives us also. The song says, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. 
Still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. But it says, my heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fear dismay. Though some may dwell where those abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. I want to live above the world. Though Satan's darts at me are hurled, for faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray like till heaven I found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up. Let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. If you want to go to higher ground today, I invite you to come to know Jesus today. The Lord makes himself available to you. He invites you into a relationship with you. He knocks at the door of your heart. Will you accept him today? Will you say, Lord, I want to go to higher ground? Lord, I know that I've lamented about this life and, and, and the things that I've done and the things that I've seen and, and, and having to be at home and having to do this and, and these things having happened to me. But, Lord, I want to go to higher ground. I want to clean out the closet, oh, God. I want to be your child. I want you to come and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Come, Lord, and fill me. If that's your desire, I want to invite you to call our church office, 817-336-2117. I want to invite you to click on the comments. If you're here by uh, Facebook, click on the comments that you want to be a child of God, that you want to accept and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. You want to rededicate your life. Maybe you're in a relationship with God, but, 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 but you kind of pulled back. You want to strengthen that relationship. You want to rededicate your life. Maybe you've not been baptized. You want to come for baptism. We're here to help you with that. Maybe you just want to grow in Christ. We want to help you with that. But if you'll contact us, we will be diligent to coming together with you and helping you on your journey. We praise God for you. And we pray that during this month that you will seek to go to higher ground. Amen. Yeah.
elements uh, that are before you and prepare your hearts now to receive. Uh, the invitation goes out to us that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us now for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive this good news, that while Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. I extend peace to you. And I want you to know that it is a good and right uh, and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to the Lord our God, to the Father Almighty, who is the creator of heaven and earth. And so we do so with all the people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. He gave thanks and he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Let us pray. Pour your Holy Spirit out on us, gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Lord, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. It is through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. The body of Christ is given for you.
the blood of Christ has been shed for you. Take now, eat and drink. Rejoice in the God who has provided for you and may his grace be sufficient. Amen. Receive now our benediction. Go forth to serve the Lord with gladness. Leave to practice your faith in your homes, your workplaces, and your communities. Go in peace, and God goes with you. Amen. Tell the world that you go.